of champions oh glory oh glory champions are 
successful. They walk in commitment or diligence. They believe in hard work. Everybody say hard work. They believe in sacrifice. Say sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah. They are patient. Say patience. They are consistent. Say consistent. Number five. Aha. Discipline. Everybody say discipline. And number six, confidence. Everybody say confidence. When you have these values in you, you will be successful in everything that you do. Hallelujah. And I see, I see you are busy developing those values in you. That's why you are becoming that kind of a champion. That's why you are becoming a winner. Glory to the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, be consistent. People who start something and they never, they never finish it, they, are, they lack that thing called consistency. People who give up in the middle, they lose, they, they, they lack patience. They give up just before they get their breakthrough. They think it is not coming. And because of lack of patience, they fail. It is so important. Look at all these people up here on the stage. Amen. A group of champions up here on the stage. Amen and amen and amen and amen. And we're going to make our confession this morning. Let's say it one, two, three. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Amen. Amen, amen. Let's appreciate our choir. Thank you so much. Put your hands together before you sit down. These people, these people need that kind of appreciation because they have shown diligence. The whole week the choir has been here in their numbers. Hallelujah. And give yourself a big hand clap because you have also been very, very consistent. God bless you. God bless you. And we are finishing the week with a bang. Somebody say bang. Being here in the morning and being here the whole night. We are going to have a Kesha like no other in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God. And you may be seated in the presence of God. Go, go into your Bibles. Uh, in the book of First Peter chapter 3, we're going to read uh, just to remind ourselves uh, verse, verse 9. And not returning evil for evil or revealing for revealing, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil his lips from speaking deceit let him turn away from evil and do good and let him seek peace 
and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Verse 1, the Bible says, and after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, do not be afraid, I am your shield. You are exceedingly great reward. Underline it in your Bible, I'll read it again. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, do not be afraid. Abraham, I'm your shield. You are exceedingly great reward. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. We are continuing on with the subject of knowing God. And today, we are picking on from where we stopped uh, yesterday. We discovered that our God is a God of covenant. A covenant is a promise that cannot be reversed. It cannot be reversed. Covenants are everlasting. God who makes covenants with his people and teaches his people to live like covenant people, he is everlasting. He has no beginning and he has no end. And therefore, the promises that he makes to his people have no end. If he promises you something, he will make it good. When you know this God, you will trust him. You will trust his word because he cannot reverse it. That's why the word of God that we use is a covenant. It has two covenants, the new and the old. A covenant is the other word of covenant is testament. Your Bible is New Testament and Old Testament. It is a book containing God's covenant with his people. Yesterday we saw we as the people of God are, sat, are supposed to to live in a certain way so that we may enjoy the benefits of the covenant. We saw that God hates evil. You have to train your tongue to speak good that no evil comes out of your tongue. Because life and death is in the power of your tongue. And so you use your tongue to bless. Because we have been called for a blessing. If you love life and good days, Peter tells us to make sure that no evil comes out of our tongue. No deceit comes out of our lips. 
that we turn away from evil. God, who is a God of covenant, he is called the God of three people. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Because these are the people that God made his covenant that extends all the way to every generation. And therefore, when you study their lives, you can see the goodness of the God that we serve. You can see his masses because they were not perfect, yet God showed mercy to them. And because of his masses, generations of their children who were not also perfect until today, they are walking in the blessing of the covenant that God made with their fathers. Every time they go in the wrong, God chastised them. He still does because he is a father. But he does not throw them away. Why? He remembers the covenant that he made with their fathers. And when he remembers that covenant, he withdraws the great evil or the great punishment that he would have brought on them. Now, the father of faith is Abraham. He is the one that God made the covenant that extends to us. It is in Genesis. We were there last uh, yesterday. Genesis chapter 12. He gives him a covenant of blessing. And you are part of that covenant. Amen. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you have no choice. You must be blessed. Tell them you are, you are in a covenant of blessing. Position yourself this year for a blessing. He calls Abraham from a worship of idols and he tells him that I will make you. He calls people to do what? To make them. God will make you. God will make you. He picks ordinary people and makes them. He told Abraham, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. This is how he is going to make him a great nation. You can't be a great nation when you are broke. He says, come out. Come out of your familiar territories. From your people, from your country, from your kindred, from your father's house. He is calling him out of the place where Abraham would depend on what he, what he knows. And brings him to a place where he knew nobody, where he could not depend on, on experience or on anything. And he tells him, I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you. This is how I will make you a, a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless whoever will bless you. And I will curse whoever will curse you. And through you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now in chapter 15. Abraham has already come into the promised land. And when he came there, there was famine. And he had not learned how this God who had called him operates. So he did what everybody else was doing. And he went to Egypt. 
But all the time, the Bible doesn't tell us how long he stayed in Egypt. But all the time he was in Egypt, God didn't speak to him. You have to be in your place where God has called you for him to instruct you. This is why you have to be grounded and rooted in a ministry. Somebody say amen. amen. So that you can generate what is called generational blessing. That you bring up your children and bring up your family in that place where God has planted you. So when he went to Egypt, still God blessed him. Materially. And Abraham comes back. When you look at his uh, time when before he went to Egypt, he built altars. He built altars. And he comes back from Egypt and he goes to worship God in the place where he had built his altar. And pitched his tent. And in chapter 15. God wants to affirm the covenant. God wants to affirm the covenant. Listen to me very carefully. Sit up. Sit up. Sit up. You need to hear this. and You need to hear it good. Because... The promises of God are yea and amen. We human beings have a tendency of treating promises when they delay a little bit like they have failed. Hear me. God can never Go against his word. Amen. So when it look like it will not happen. God affirms his word. Amen. He says to Abraham. Don't be afraid. I know there may be people talking. And trying to tell you what I told you will not happen. I am not like that. I am your shield and I am your exceedingly great reward. In other words, I'm your blesser. I promise to bless you and nothing can change that. That's called affirmation. When God calls you, he calls you to something and nothing can change what he promises. Not circumstances, not anything you yourself do. Not anything that people do to you. You see it all over scripture. One of, his, one of the three people he is named after is called Jacob. When Jacob went to live with his, with his uncle Laban. Laban did everything to make sure Jacob amounted to nothing. He would have sent him away empty handed after working for him for 21, day, 21 years. But God would not allow. God would not allow the evil intents of Laban to be fulfilled on one whom he had covenant with. Amen. This is why in a short time God gave up. Jacob wisdom and he transferred all the wealth of Laban in a short time. All the wealth of Laban that had come to Laban because of the blessing of, of God that was on, on Jacob. God said to God, God had to show Laban that you have actually been blessed because this person is in covenant with me. 
That's why association is very important. Amen. And the people you associate with will, will determine how far you will go in life. Amen. Don't become associate with everybody. Don't, as, don't get yourself locked up with people who are not of covenant. That's why the Bible wants us not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers because unbelievers are not in covenant with God. Are you with me? So Jacob is told, is given wisdom by God and all the wealth in a short time that Jacob, that Laban had gotten because of the blessing of God that was on, on Jacob, it was all transferred to Jacob. And God told Jacob, when he transferred everything, God told Jacob, go back to, the, to your father's house. And Jacob is afraid because his brother wanted to kill him. And God has already dealt with Esau. He tells him, go back. Why? Because Laban has not recognized that he is blessed because of you. So I have taken what belonged to you, which Laban thought belonged to him. I am giving it to you. So go back to your father's house. And the man left, and he left with a lot of wealth. Why? Because this is how our God works. He is a blesser. That's why he is saying to Abraham, I am your shield, and I am your exceedingly great reward. It is God who will reward you for the labor that you are laboring in his kingdom. And he will reward you in due time. It may look like it will not happen. I say it may look like you are laboring for free. It may look like you are not being paid. But I am here to tell you. He is you are exceedingly, exceedingly great reward. Somebody shout hallelujah. He is your exceedingly great reward. And he will reward you. He will pay you. He doesn't receive free service. You are coming here. It's being recorded every day in heaven. You are waking up. Every sacrifice you are making. Records are being done in heaven. There are angels that are assigned over you. Because you are a righteous man. And they are putting down records of all your good deeds. And God who cannot break covenant will bless you you will be blessed you will be blessed in the city you will be blessed in the countryside you will be blessed when you come in you will be blessed when you go out everything that you touch with your hands will be blessed it is time for you to know that you are serving a God who is not gigel gel he does not change like a chameleon he is not like men that he would change his mind. He is not like men that he would repent. As he said it and will he not make it good. Lift up your hands and begin to thank him. Open your mouth and thank this great God. Tell him I love you Jesus. You paid the price for my blessing. You paid, you paid the great price for my blessing. For my eternal life. That I may not only be blessed materially, but I may be blessed forever. I may be blessed forever. I may be blessed forever. Oh, Rabbi Hando Basata Mando Rabba. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we worship you. We honor you, King Jesus. We worship you. We glorify your holy name. Put your hands together and celebrate our good God. Yes, he will bless you. He will reward you. I am talking to you. You need to know it. You need to believe it. 
because in this kingdom you receive by believing you need to believe you are blessed you are blessed when you come in you are blessed when you go out you are blessed in the city you are blessed in the countryside whatever you touch with your hands it attracts blessing somebody shout yes your labor in the Lord will be rewarded guaranteed amen and amen and amen you may be seated in the presence of God prepare your early morning sacrifice uh, unto the Lord we cannot come before the Lord we saw that he is a king we cannot come before him empty handed so if you need to give from your phone you need to take an envelope you brought your tithe is the brown envelopes you need to give your offering is the white envelope and the Lord Jesus is going to bless you give with expectation he is the one that says this is one of the promises that he has made covenant it's in your Bible it's covenant say everything written in my Bible is covenant it cannot be reversed. So Luke 6, uh, 38 is true. Given it shall be given back to you in good measure, president shaken together and overflowing shall men put on your bosom. So every time you give, you must give with expectation. You must not give ignorantly, religiously, what this hence odds, this other one should not know. That is alms it's not offering it's alms is when you give to the poor you don't it doesn't matter whatever this hand is holding the poor will receive it lift it up before the lord we're gonna pray father thank you for your goodness your faithfulness your tender mercies that endureth forever as we give our offerings this morning may your blessing be unlocked by our giving of faith in Jesus name I pray amen and amen the ashes will come and they will serve us give as unto the Lord we are our brothers keepers somebody shout amen and today is the day of our intercession we are going to spend the night in the presence of God we are going to have a great Kesha not just big but great somebody shout great amen amen a great Kesha here so call somebody call somebody and uh, prepare them for the Kesha and the Lord God is going to bless you as you do so yes So this is your giving and a standing order for $1,000 for the gospel. The Lord Jesus bless you. May you prosper. May, may your faithfulness, even when you are out of the country and, and in a foreign country, may your faithfulness bring great reward may you be protected on all sides and great doors open for you in that foreign land in jesus name amen save journey to italy amen He needs to go to school.
He needs to clear his school. Does that need a prayer? How much is your how much do you, do you hold a school? It's paid. Go. Get his details. Get his details. We are going to pay the school. You don't going to pray those kind of prayers here. The children of this house. The children of this house cannot, cannot be hold small little things of school fees when we are blessed. So, somebody shout hallelujah. Stand up, we are going, we are going, we are going to go and make money. Tell your neighbor, we are going to go and make money. Lift your hands to heaven. I cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. I speak God's protection over your life. As we leave this place, Lord, go with us, watch over us, and bless us. For surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Have a blessed day. This program is made possible courtesy of the Wilfred Lai Partners. For prayers, inquiry, and partnership, contact us on 0800-000-898 or send a text to 23378 and our team of counselors will help you. This program.